Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're from. Welcome to ISACA Live. Uh, today we'll be talking about the hot topic on everyone's mind, AI. I'm Karen Heslop, the VP of Content Development at ISACA. And I'm John Brandt, Director of Professional Practices and Innovation here at ISACA. We'll be discussing results of ISACA's 2024 AI Pulse Poll and sharing some resources we've created for you all. For those of you tuning in, please use the comments to share where you're from and add your questions for us in, those, in the comments. So let's get started. John, this is the second time we've conducted the AI Pulse Poll with the first being about eight months ago. So how do the two compare? Well, not surprisingly, um, not much has changed. And and we would hope that it would have, right? At the end of the day, I think the, the most shocking uh, revelation out of this Pulse poll was that um, there's still only 15% actually have some kind of comprehensive AI policy. And that's extremely problematic right now, uh, given its pervasiveness, not only just from uh, generative AI and, and potentially people using um you know, cloud-based sources, but also for the number of products that are in, in, uh, increasingly are being, uh, they're adding an AI capability in there. So um, th we still have, there's a whole lot of um, room to, to go with that one. 40% um, of organizations offer no training at all, and only 32% offer it to their tech folks. And, and so again, um, AI is one of these, it's truly a disruptive technology and it can't be just viewed upon as a need for the technology people because AI cuts across all business areas and everybody could use some guidance uh, right about now. Yeah. Okay. Surely, I was going to say, John, sorry, John, you, know, you and I often like talk about how AI is the new um, shadow IT, right? It, it, you may think it's not being used in your organization, but undoubtedly it likely is by someone. Absolutely, right? And, and left left um, unmanaged, that's a problem, right? Like at the end of the day, like to go out and say, folks, don't use AI, it's bad, is, is arguably like that ship is already left for. Like yeah. it, there are notable business benefits to be had from it, but it requires an awareness by the organization. Agreed. And then the final um, highlight, you know, between the two last with well, the one eight months ago and now is that there's still there's high recognition between digital trust professionals that they're going to need some training to advance their careers. And that's really not of any surprise there. Um, they recognize where where we are today and, and probably are the most forward looking as to what's going to be needed down the road. So, John, can you elaborate on the findings about digital trust professionals um, needing training or recognizing that they need training? Sure. So 85 percent believe they need to enhance their AI skills within the next two years to keep or advance their jobs. Uh, we're not talking about career advance just career advancements, though. Uh, there's a huge percentage of people agreeing training will be critical just to even keep their jobs. Now, you know, in and part of that, so there's a little bit of FUD in that, right? The fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's driving some of this out there. I largely feel like in the conversations that we have with practitioners, that that's a lot more manageable there. It, it's the it's the it's all the other occupations throughout any organization, all the other workforce disciplines, they're probably a little bit more leery right now. And that's just right now, that's that hype cycle. And whereas things were pretty high, things are starting to come down. We're seeing those that reporting. Um, and again, it's just it, it, the the way forward is for an enterprise to really position this. How can we be better and how can we help you be more productive instead of we're trying to reduce headcount? Yeah, you know, the hype cycle, it's super interesting, John. You know, like if you just look at the popular press and, you know, it's AI, it feels like 24-7. And there's a lot of, you know, naysayers out there and there's a lot of concern that, you know, AI is going to take over the world and take all our jobs. Um, what was interesting in the Pulse poll was that 
digital trust professionals were very optimistic about their field compared to others, uh, you know, given AI's impact on jobs. Well, I think a lot of that's going to come down to the, it's the repetitiveness. And if we look at the, the most, the most common ways AI is being used, it's to increase productivity and it's to automate those repetitive tasks. And those two response options really kind of go hand in hand in a lot of ways. Um, so to, to piggyback on your point, though, you know, 45 percent believe that the jobs are going to be eliminated. Um, and another 80 percent feel that jobs are going to be modified. And, and again, I think this comes back to this hype cycle. What we do know right now is that world leaders are not they're, they're very they're looking at this. And if you look at some of the reporting from a, from a global stage, right, um, global economic bodies and whatnot, I, I largely believe people are are fully aware of the potential global economic ramifications of this if it's not done right, right? The, the answer isn't that, hey, all low-level jobs are going to go away. Like, that's just unrealistic. And you and I have had these conversations, right, when it comes to this state of cyber report that we do annually. It's how do you, if we start taking away all of the low-level jobs, how do people get experience when experience is what's required to move into a position? That's true. All right, let's shift gears a little bit, John. Um, let's dive into some of the benefits and risks of AI. So how are companies currently using it most? So uh, we mentioned, right, productivity uh, came in at 35%. Uh, automating repetitive tasks was just below that at 33%. And, and then creating content, uh, written content at 33%. And of the three, that's the one that organizations really, they should, their interest needs to be peaked, right? Because you alluded to it earlier, um, you know, in a lot of ways, generative AI is, is, represents the, the evolution of shadow IT. So where a particular enterprise is, um, if intellectual property and thought and content creation is their commodity, the risk increases there, right? And, and, and I, I would believe that most of our viewers and listeners or, or anybody who's going to tune in after the fact, they're fully aware of the, of the power struggle that's been happening, especially with the creative uh, arts type landscape. So any kind of creator, whether it's written, digital or whatnot, uh, it's already taken itself to the courts because we do, you know, what is unknown right now, def definitively, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence to say, hey, models were trained using data that they didn't have ownership of. Right. So, you know, it, there does seem to be a very big concern about the misuse of generative AI. What does the poll say? Well, interestingly, 60% are worried about bad actors exploiting generative AI. And again, um, that's, it, that's credible. Let's just say that, right? Like at the end of the day, there's, there's surely reports of bad actors um, weaponizing technology, right, and AI now. Um, and, and that's the same for any type of technology. Um, but 81% say the top, their top risk was that AI spreading misinformation or disinformation. And and do ahead. you agree that that's the top risk, John? I personally do not know. I okay. think that in a lot of ways, listen, it is a risk, but through over time, and let's let's walk back from this AI issue and let's look at the digital ecosystem. Time and time again, enterprise-related incidents, right, are attributed to insider threat. Like th that is irrefutable. So in that instance, then it's actually more, I would say that the IP loss would have been a much, should have shown up on the radar of the top two here. I think this misinformation, dif, disinformation, and again, this is, this is, you know, John, 
there's a hype cycle. There's, there's the FUD of it all. There's the AI is bad because it's going to take jobs when AI is a resource and, and, and it has very strong tendencies to help problem solve, right? Like at the end of the day, but all of that requires, and it ties back to humans that are, have designed it, architected it, implemented it, and are monitoring. And, and we know that people are fallible. So that to me is, is far bigger than the misinformation, disinformation right now. So, you know, AI really can be used as an enabler, right? It, it can really assist job to enterprises, as you mentioned, right, to automate repetitive tasks, for example. But you've got to balance it against the risk of misuse, right? And and do you think that organizations are sufficiently prioritizing the risk? Well, according to respondents, no. Uh, only 35% of respondents say, um, you know, risks are immediate priority for their organizations. Now, you know, that's that's not a good number, right, at the end of the day. Um, however, the opportunity here is that realistically, this should propel enterprises to increase the frequency of their risk assessments, right? And we, we've talked about this years past in uh, State of Cyber repeatedly where it was, it was, the target was no earlier than annual. And we've been seeing that come down some to that six month to 12 month. AI is really one of these things that I think we're going to see this uh, more incremental. It's going to be more agile assessments. It's going to be just in time, but recognize that it is just a moment in time. And so for one enterprise, that may, you, you're probably going to need to be for uh, conducting some kind of ad hoc one, potentially even at the release level, right? And again, this is, you know, we we provide a lot of guidance to our members and our practitioners are executing on this and they're doing a, a, a phenomenal job helping to minimize risk across the ecosystem. But there is no one size fits all in any of this. And I think that's the big takeaway is, for something for as much of a capability as AI might be, there's going to be unintended consequences. So, and again, when we talk about the, you know the uncertainty of it all and jobs are going to go away, I actually like to think that we, what we're going to see is a recomposition in certain areas of, of the workforce because it's not that necessary jobs are going to get eliminated across the board. It's that in some areas as they mature, you're going to need more folks actually moving into this arena from everything from the design to the risk assessment, to the auditing, to the security part of it um, moving forward. So what are three things that companies should be doing right now to be better positioned when it comes to AI? Well, first and foremost, they, they need to understand how it's being used. And um, so it, in co corporate culture is going to determine how you go about that, right? Like we, we look at things like security education and awareness training, and it's like, you know, click the mouse in a lot of ways. And we try to get innovative, but a lot of it is it's, it's that compliance type mentality in an absence of any strong compliance related mechanisms right now, an organization needs to first and foremost, they need to go pull their people. You need to build trust and figure out what's going on with that. So, but secondary to that is collaboration. There is no technology before now. Like let's, let's take the lessons learned of how security went wrong all those years where we try to bolt it on, right? Like businesses were operating for decades upon decades. And then security people came in and said, thou shall not do. And how well did that work out for anybody? It really didn't, right? So we had a position. We had to kind of change things and say, okay, hey, let's partner with you. Let me understand your business. And then let me explain to you all of the bad stuff that can happen and then empower you to make better risk-related decisions. So, and then the third one is, it's going to be the training piece of it. And this is across the organization, right? You you have to go forward and, and actually 
build trust with them. And it's not, it can't necessarily be the, the stick. It needs to be more of the carrot. It needs to be that partnership to say, listen, these, we understand you want to make, make your life a little easier in the workplace. Let's just be real, right? Because creating things from scratch is a lot harder than refining. You and I know that in the content space. Um, but you have to understand your customers. So, and again, tied back to the security thing is now we're extending it down a, a, another level beyond the business leaders actually to the end user to really understand how it is that, uh, how can their, their job be better? Yeah. And speaking of training, John, um, ISACA is launching a series of on-demand AI training courses. Um, Three have already been released this month. We have one called AI Essentials, which is really for the those that are very new to AI and need to learn about what it is, how it works. We also have a course on auditing generative AI and a third course on AI governance. Um, these are online on-demand training courses. And you, if you take them, you receive CPE. We also have some more um, courses in the pipeline. Um, over the next two months, we will also release an introduction to AI for auditors course, um, a machine learning course, and an ethics course, um, and more to come. So we would love to hear your suggestions. Um, I, I also want to say ISACA has a lot of not just courses that are designed to help you, but a lot of other guidance. So for example, um, ISACA recently released a policy library um, that's free to members. And in that policy library is an AI acceptable use policy. So you mentioned early on, John, that only 15% in the Pulse survey said that they had a policy. Well, we have a policy for you. You can you know, jump right on it. Um, we have an AI audit toolkit which provides, this is, it's a very robust, um, it, it's almost an audit program on steroids, right? And it, it includes a lot of controls that you can use to audit AI, right? And looking at AI from different perspectives. So if you're an auditor and you're, you're tasked with, well, do I need to determine whether or not the audit is fair? There's a set of controls that would look at fair, fairness or bias. There's another set of controls, for example, that would look at data. So there's a there's a lot of um, really valuable information in that toolkit. Um, we just came out. I'm hoping most of you are familiar with our digital trust ecosystem framework. Um, we just came out with a white paper on using that framework to um, make sure your AI was trustworthy. So that's a white paper out there. Um, I encourage you to look at isaka.org. Um, we are here to serve you, our members. So we would love your suggestions. All of these resources can be found at isaka.org backslash AI. And with that, I don't think there's any questions. I will just pause a minute to see if any questions have come through. Hey, Karen, can we, let's plug the uh, promise and peril. Oh, um, there you go, the risk, AI. yeah. So, so we put on an, a risk-related paper um, a little over a year ago. So if you're, if for some reason you hadn't seen that or you're new to this uh, AI-related, you know, problem or you're thrust into a job and all of a sudden now this is your responsibility, great resource for you to really kind of ascertain uh, the risks associated with it. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Thank you, John. Uh, we look forward to talking to you in the future. <laughs>